Is this CPU really as miserable as many think and say? I mean, right now it costs somewhere in between 530 and 600 US dollars. It's based on a rather dated manufacturing process, is based on a five year old architecture, and on top of all that, it doesn't even bring as many cores to the table as the competition AMD does for less money. And then there's also the power consumption and potentially temperatures that we have to talk about. So yes, the rather harsh question is somewhat justified here. Here, is this CPU really as bad as many think it is? What are its weaknesses, but also its strengths? Obviously, we are finally talking about the Intel Core i9 10900K Comet Lake processor featuring 10 cores and 20 threads. Not much of a surprise with Intel, we once again have to welcome a brand new socket. Therefore, we have to spend a decent amount of money on a new motherboard. Yay. Well, we'll take a closer look at all that today. Maybe this CPU is somewhat decent after all. Big thanks goes out to the Spartans named Equipper. They once again went to battle to get me these processors for somewhat decent prices and as quickly as possible for reviews. At this point I want to let you know I have been offered review samples by Intel, but I thankfully turned their offer down since I want to remain 100% unbiased when it comes to reviews of CPUs and graphics cards, without any regard for any persons involved at Intel or AMD. So just like any other ordinary mortal, I have paid for all the CPUs out of my own pocket. Unfortunately, in the case of the 10900K, I have to be happy with just the tray version. In hindsight, if I had waited about one week longer, Equipper would have been able to sell me the boxed variant. But well, it is how it is. Now in order to get a better idea on what we are dealing with today, let's have a quick look at the specs, including competing CPUs such as the Ryzen 9 3900X and 3950X by AMD. The latter however, not really being comparable due to higher pricing. Anyway, the 3900X currently goes for about $415, but often for around $500 or more. Still, it's cheaper than the 10900K, which goes for like $530 to $600, depending on availability. As I've mentioned in the beginning, we get a brand new socket, namely LJ1200. Within the Intel mainstream lineup, for the first time ever, we now get a whopping 10 cores and 20 threads, along with a pretty remarkable boost clock of up to 5.3 GHz. But don't get me wrong, as always with boost clocks, even on the AMD side of things, they tend to apply for just a single core. According to the Intel specification, we are talking of a 125 watt TDP, even though that can quickly turn into 250 watts. More on that shortly. What once again could turn out to be Intel's slight downfall in this case is the by now rather outdated 14 nanometer process. While that one has been tweaked and refined countless of times to squeeze out more and more performance and higher clock speeds, there comes a time you run into physical limitations. Nonetheless, quite impressive how well Intel manages to squeeze out the last drop of performance out of this note. Even the actual CPU architecture is based on 2015's Skylake, so definitely not so new. For the motherboard, I decided not to get something all too special. This is the ASRock Z490 Extreme 4. Not a bad board, but really nothing out of the ordinary. Still, I had to shell out over $200 for it. Z490 got significantly more expensive than Z390 when looking at it this way. All the tests I've carried out with my trusty Deepcool Castle 240EX AIO liquid cooler. But now this is where things start getting interesting when checking the clock speeds. If I go ahead and start a Cinebench run, all 10 cores run at impressive 4.9 GHz. In the second run though, the 10900K only clocks at 4.3 to 4.4 GHz all of a sudden, therefore achieves a much lower score than before. This is because the 10900K for roughly one minute is allowed a TDP of 250 watts, meaning we get a noticeably higher clock speed for about a minute, therefore also noticeably more performance. Well, that sure sounds nice at first, but it comes with a bitter aftertaste of cheating, since actually in benchmarks, especially shorter ones such as Cinebench, V-Ray, etc., Intel would get drastically higher scores than what the CPU would be capable of delivering for a longer period of time. If you're asking me, this once again is one dirty trick to create the illusion of being faster in the charts in many reviews than the CPU actually is for real when stressing it for longer than one minute. 
Now this of course is debatable, you can look at this from two sides, but it sure is a bit controversial. In conjunction with good temperatures, we should in theory be able to witness a boost clock of up to 5.3 GHz on a single core. Those 5.3 GHz, however, I've never seen. In my case, I only got up to 5.1 GHz at max, which in itself is pretty damn good too. Something I have to generally criticize on this new Intel platform is the fact that in terms of features, it currently cannot keep up with AMD's latest platform. For instance, Intel's 10th gen CPUs don't come with any support for PCIe 4.0. It may not be a big deal for many of you, but for those that want and need that extra bandwidth, a disappointment for sure. PCIe 4.0 apparently, according to the latest information out there, will only be officially be supported on the next generation Intel processors. But enough words coming out of my mouth, let's let the test results do the talking for you. It was all tested with the usual NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti graphics card to avoid all sorts of GPU bottlenecks as best as possible. Enjoy! Not really surprising, just like I and many of you have expected, even before the official launch, Intel is and remains the king of gaming. Undoubtedly, in most game titles, with the 10900K we get the best and highest frame rate. Even the predecessor i9-9900K, equipped with 8 cores, gets beaten, albeit only marginally. Unfortunately, things don't always look so nice in games with Intel's new Comet Lake processors. In the relatively old title Crisis 3, the 10900K pretty much collapses in terms of FPS, horrible lag and stuttering. I would not take that too seriously though, because let's face it, this game by now is over 7 years old. Nonetheless, a good indicator of CPU performance, which is why I still like to include this game in my test parkour. Unfortunately, the i9-10900K only impresses me when it comes to gaming. While we do get really good performance for rendering, video editing, etc. thanks to those 10 cores, those that pay close attention will notice that the Ryzen 9 3900X is noticeably cheaper, at least over here in Europe, brings quite a bit more raw performance to the table, handles gaming quite well, keeps up well with a pretty high frame rate, especially with a few FPS more or less not making much of a difference anyway, and last but not least, the 3900X also happens to be more energy efficient, it consumes roughly 25% less power than the 10900K. The 3900X, however, depending on the application, offers about 15% more performance, in the case of Cinebench for instance. Then we also have to keep in mind that Intel does cheat slightly if you want to call it like this. This helps them achieve a higher score in benchmarks for instance, you know, thanks to that noticeably higher 1 minute boost clock. 
so you've surely noticed by now I'm not too excited about the i9 10900K. I'm starting to worry we might end up with yet another nasty monopoly situation like the previous years, the only difference with AMD being on top now. That would be bad. We need strong competition and unfortunately that is not Intel. If things don't change for the better anytime soon, we might end up having to pay more for our beloved CPUs. On a more positive note, the temperatures really did surprise me. Coming from the experience I had to make with the previous 9th gen, I expected some kind of inferno, but I was completely wrong and I'm very happy about that. How did Intel do that? How is that possible? After all, dealing with 10 cores is no small thing, especially not when keeping in mind the temperatures we had to deal with with the predecessor 9900K equipped with just 8 cores. Now it's not just soldering, but the actual die of the CPU has gotten smaller, meaning there's not as much material in between the actual source of heat and the heat spreader. Furthermore, the gap that was left behind due to the now smaller die was filled out by more of the heat spreader, which leads to some additional cooling surface, if you will. That way, heat can be dissipated much faster and efficiently. A pretty simple, straightforward and yet genius idea one could have come up with much earlier. The bottom line is, other than many, including myself at first thought, temperatures are of absolutely no concern here. Unfortunately, the happiness doesn't last long when glancing over to the power consumption. The power draw is not good to put it mildly, especially not when starting to compare what AMD is currently capable of in terms of performance per watt. But not all is bad about the 10900K. In fact, the phenomenal gaming performance does make this CPU stand out in some way. But that's about it. For many of us, gaming is not the only thing in life. Many, including myself, need a CPU for work. So there is a certain requirement for high raw performance. That Intel certainly does offer with 10 cores and 20 threads to work with, don't get me wrong, but right now the competition AMD has better deals to offer. Not only more performance for significantly less money, but also a more energy efficient solution. So now to get back to the question of the beginning, is the 10900K really that bad? Yes and no, the CPU in itself isn't bad at all, it's the pricing that's bad. It's only after you start checking and comparing the price to performance ratio of competing models against this i9 10900K, then you start noticing this specific CPU isn't really the best choice you can make. Nonetheless, those of you that don't care too much about money or simply want the best possible gaming performance, go ahead, no one's holding you back, the Intel Core i9 10900K is the number one in gaming, for now. For me, as a content creator, the 10900K happens to be a disappointment, however. With that being said, see you soon in the next one and thanks a lot for watching.